What's up everyone, welcome to Power Play with CJ. Today I'm going to talk about the latest breakdown in the CBA negotiations and where everything stands as of right now. Um, you know, two, Monday, Tuesday this week, uh, you know, the NHL proposed, put that proposal online for the public to read and uh, looked like, okay, we're going to have a deal done in a week or two. We're going to start playing in two weeks and, you know, two, three weeks and then, you know, lo and behold, Foggy will be back. Well, Gary Batman is a lying snake. Here's what ticks me off. On the you know, fifty fifty splits fine. But they're not gonna honor existing contracts. That's that's bullshit, for lack of a better way. That's awful. I don't understand how and I know Craig Leopold was one of the ones that doesn't is one of the ones that doesn't want to honor contracts. Gave out two hundred million dollars worth of contracts or something. I mean seriously? You gotta bring in Parisi and Suter. I mean t give them the money. They're, they're both good players and definitely happy franchise. Both great players, excuse me. And then, yeah, well, we gave you 96, we're only going to pay you 8. I mean, that's not fair. And people talk about, well, you're talking about $100 million. Like, no, you sign a contract for that. They owe you that. I mean, and then I think the first mistake the NHL made was losing public opinion right off the bat. And this just further digs the owners into a hole that has the public turning against them. The, the public's been on the player's side, the player's side, excuse me, since the start. You know, that, that's been obvious. When f the play association said they'd play without an agreement in place, and Batman said, no, you won't, right there, that's when they lost me. The owners lost me completely because maybe the play association, the players association was bluffing, called a bluff. Or keep playing, play and hammer up the negotiation simultaneously, multitask, as, as Oprah Winfrey calls it. And then, lo and behold, you know, deal will get done. Because money will be coming in, everyone's making money, everyone's happy. And before you say that you can't do that, I'll tell you one thing. The Boston Teachers Association, a union, Boston Teachers Union, went, uh, I think, two or three years between contracts and was teaching without a contract for that duration of time. Now, in the grand scheme of things, you got one group of people that plays a game on ice with sticks and piece of rubber and one that molds young children. Children's minds from kindergarten to 12th grade. Now, obviously, financially, huge, hugely different story, but vastly different story, but... You know, that's, that's something to keep an eye on, but, you know, that's where they lost me. And, uh, you know, I don't think you'll get the fans. They had the fan support for about 36 hours, and then the negotiations broke down today. Unanimously on Twitter, players are saying, we'll play a 50-50 split on our contracts, which is fair. Th that's as fair an agreement as, as you can make. You get half, I get half, and you pay me what you sign me to. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. I don't see that being a major issue. And I just don't see how you can dishonor a contract like that, especially... When well, the, you know the the Suter and Breezy contracts, Shea Weber, you know, he had at least three, and forget at least a few contracts signed the off season that were upwards of 100 million dollars. I mean, so you, you sign them, but not you don't plan on paying them. I mean, how 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 two faced is that? I mean, the players have every right to do this, and uh, you know the fans and the people that you know, like I said, that work around the arenas and everything, they're the ones that get hurt. But you know, the play association stronger than ever, and uh, right now I, I'd say we're looking. I'm trying to think, put a put a date on it. You know, maybe something breaks in the next 48 hours. But given the way these negotiations, and I think they should have, they should have done this last summer. They should have renegotiated with the year left on the deal, and uh, and then got it done. But you know, however, however this cracks, Gary Bettman needs to be out of a job. You can't have three work stoppages in 18 years in a, in a major pro sports league. It, it just doesn't work that way. You know, you alienate fans. You realistically could have surpassed the NBA in 1994. Sports Illustrated had that great article, Why the NHL is Hipper Than the NBA. And then they lock out the first time. Then a trap, and that era of hockey came about, and you know, now, now look where we are. We're right back where we started. We're right at square one. You know, balls in Batman's court now. He should, You know what? When it's all about, Batman should resign. Take it in. <laughs> the irony is he's going to go in the Hall of Fame because he's commissioner. But that's a different story. Um, <clears throat> you know, we lost a full season. Uh, eight years ago, and you can't do this again to the fans and the people that rely on on hockey-related revenues, real hockey-related revenues. You know, people that own bars and restaurants, and uh, you know that work in arenas that depend on this for their pay, for their you know their pay to put food on the table. You know, the real people that that are gonna get hurt by this. But uh, that's all I got on this episode of the Power Play with CJ on the latest breakdown in CBA negotiations. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the off throughout the lockout, off season, and beyond. Later, guys.